Hello everybody, Brad Johnson here. And in this video, I'm going to be talking about Phase 2, The Creative Path. Now in the past, going back a little bit of a ways, I was originally talking about what's known as the Creator's Path. And that this was indeed the path to God, the path to the true self. And that is still true, but as an update to that previous video, rather than looking at it as the creator's path, it is much more appropriate to look at it as the creative or the realized path. So there's some updates pertaining to that old video about the creator's path, about that particular path where you are following the self, where you are living as self, you are living as creator, you are living as God, you are living as I. So the creative and realized path in this updated version is also known as the phase two path. So, Let's cover, firstly, the idea of the other two phases briefly, okay? And we'll start off with phase zero. Now, why do I term it as phase zero? Because this is basically what it represents. It is an empty path. It does not lead to anything. It is animalistic. It is a survivalist path. It is all about the body. It is all about base ick instincts. And I mean that with quite a literal significator relating to base. Very base, very root, very solid, very hard, very rough, okay? So your basic instincts, okay, survival, okay, and there's a great lack of independent thought, okay, no real independent thought, just doing as you're told, just following the status quo, right, not thinking for yourself whatsoever, we may be familiar with people like that, where they simply live to survive. They are just caught up in their basic instincts. They're in a pain body or in a pain state, as I like to call it more so, in the idea of a pain body. Looking into the idea of a pain state. All they want to do is just try and survive for another day. Physical reality really is all there is to them. It's their work, it's their run around, their nine to five, so to speak. When I did the four stages of human spiritual evolution, these are the people in the pit, right? So just as I refer to it as that drawing, the pit, right? Then we have the valley, then we have the climbers, then we have the summit. So these guys are here. They're in the pit, they're fighting to survive, they're struggling. They don't want to believe in anything else. It's just a fight to survive. It's basic instincts. It's base lusts, right? It just leads to an empty path. And this is why I term it personally as phase zero, okay? The survival path, the body path, okay? Then we move beyond that and we go into phase one. So phase one would represent that of the mind or the thought path. So it's an update from the previous video where I was talking about self-realization. No, not quite. This would be more so about mind and thought path. So the mind and the thought path, it really is, again, going beyond the body. It certainly is a lot better than being here. That's for sure. Being in the pit. You're crawling out of the pit and you're in the valley, 
right? And basically you could say that phase one would cover the valley and it would cover the climbers as well too. So the valley and the climbers represent the idea of the mind or thought path, okay? So this is where we're looking into the power of thoughts, okay? The power of your feelings as well too. You could have thoughts and feelings here. And we're also looking into expansion. We can also look into psychic phenomena, the occult. It's kind of psychic occult teachings. Anything that represents, again, mind training, training of the mind. I'm looking into creation. And again, this by itself is a pretty powerful path, okay? It's not to say it's a bad thing at all. But again, it represents those who are the seekers, the truthers, so to speak, the doers, right? That's really what we're looking at here. People who want to ask the big questions, you know, we could basically refer to them as the red pillars, right? People who want to take the red pill, and others who would, liber who would label the people who take the blue pill, would be these guys, right? The phase zeros, the blue pillars, taking the blue pill, so to speak. And these guys are the red pills. These guys are the truthers. These guys are the psychics. These guys are the mediums, right? These guys are the expanders. We want to ask the big questions. We want to start doing things. We want to start improving ourselves. We want to start climbing that mountain, right? Looking for God, searching for the self, right? Moving into that alignment. And like I said, that's good. It's a, it's a powerful path in its own way, pertaining to phase one. For the longest time, I was in phase one myself, right? As a channeler, right? That too is a phase one path. Channeler, medium, psychic, right? A healer, the red pill, the truther, the questioner, the doer, okay? That is phase one, and it's all good. It's great, but it's not the higher path, okay? It would basically be seen as the middle path. Now, what the phase one will do a lot is they will talk about the ego, and they will often talk about vibration, and they'll talk about attraction, and they'll talk about intuition, They'll talk about new thought. Okay. And you could say genuine spirituality or general spirituality. And like I said, it's all good. No problem. We can certainly talk about those things. We can certainly look into the ego. We can certainly look into attraction, into ego and vibration. However, when you are here at phase one, like I said, a lot of this is your focus. Mind, thought, feelings, emotions, all together. So, it is strong, but it's not, it's not the grasp of what's going to bring you into freedom. Okay, This does not represent freedom, neither does this. Neither of them are a freedom path. Neither of them bring you into the alignment of freedom altogether. Well, why? Why is that? Because they both focus on the mind. Okay? Even the phase zeros here where they're on the body path, they still focus on mind. It's just kind of the, the lower degree of the mind. It's survival instincts. It's the basic instincts in that way. And of course, this just focuses on a higher degree of the mind, but really... The mind is the mind. It doesn't matter what kind of levels you put onto it. The mind will always be the mind. So when we get into these two areas here, like I said, they're stepping stones. Not really this one, because this is like the base. This is rock bottom right here. <laughs> right? You're in the pit. And many of us will start to climb out of the pit. Good news is that there's a lot more people climbing out of the phase zero pits. Right? There are some that are still in the pits, but they have basically, again, taken their hand away, right? You're reaching out your hand to them, 
nope, I'm not doing that. Uh, you want to take want to take away my security, my survival, my ability to live in this way, etc. I'm not doing that, right? Taking the blue pill, so to speak, in that matter of uh, of identifying that. Okay, phase zero, and you have the phase one, and like I said, they talk about the mind. They talk about the ego, right? And they say, well, rather than looking into this lower vibrational belief system, right? Because we look into the belief systems here, the vibration of it. I'll just refer to it as low vibratory belief, LVB. We're going to shift it into HVB, which means the higher vibrational uh, level, right? So, or belief system, the higher vibrational belief system, okay? And so basically the common thing within the new thought, within the mind and thought phase, phase one, is that if you have your ego, that's okay, right? We just want to swap an old belief system with a brand new one. So what we're doing is we're going into this small box, and we're going to make a bigger one. Here's the bigger box, right? We're going to go there. Because we're still going to have a belief system, but it's going to be a higher vibrational belief system. Okay? And I am not here to offend anybody who has gone off these teachings. I mean, I've gone through these teachings myself in the past as well. But this is completely wasting your time. All right? It is a complete waste of time looking into that. If we're looking into trying to swap out a lower vibrational belief system and put in its place a higher vibrational belief system because it's still a prison. All you're doing is you're moving from a personal prison cell into the prison yard. Okay, The prison yard is about 15 times bigger than the personal prison cell but it's still a prison. So what that teaches through those common teachings based upon the ego, based upon your lower vibratory system, your low vibratory belief systems is that you're just going out of one small box and you're coming into a bigger box and it's teaching you how to cope. Okay? You are coping with the low vibratory belief system shifting into a high vibratory belief system. And that's not going to get you nowhere. That's not going to get you anywhere. Okay. We are not here to cope and we are not here to endure the ego. No, it's no more different than feeling like you're trying to make best friends with a bag of poison. Okay. The ego is a poison. The ego is, is unnatural. It is an unnatural construct that each and every single one of us born of a woman has. The unnatural ego. Now the ego does reside naturally within our own body, but it was never brought out in the size, in the intensity, as it is in our modern era. Right? If we're looking at a person here, Okay, you may see that that little dot there, hardly noticeable, probably on camera, that little dot would be about the basic size of what the ego was contained within our own genome, right? It is related to genetics. It is related to constructs within the brain as well, too. But it was a minuscule size. Okay, now if you basically take that little dot, right, this, right, here's the size of the dot. We make it like this. That's what's happened. Okay. We took that little dot. Here's this giant circle in its place. And we call that the ego, right? That is the intellect. That is the mind, right? So the body mind, the ego, the intellect, logic, 
Okay. I know a lot of people love this. I'm not trying to bash logic, of course. There's a place for it if you're in the material world. And yeah, maybe logic will serve you well. But when you are looking to be free, and I want to really put that down, I want to emphasize that with big, bold, capital letters. If you are looking to go completely free, this has to go. This has to be completely dissolved from you. You are not letting your body and your mind feel like it holds a dominion over you. I've talked about this before, right? Not letting the body and mind have a dominion. The ego is really what has a dominion over so many people on the planet. And it's only a scarce few, a small number of people who have been able to transcend this. Okay? And this is the greatest virus on the face of the earth. It is the greatest virus that humanity has ever known, right? It's not COVID, okay? It's not cancer. It's not heart disease. It's not any of those things. It is the ego. Ego is the virus. It is harshness. It is basically like an implant, right? This gigantic circle placed directly into us. An implant, it acts as an entity as well too, almost like an artificial intelligence, okay? And again, it thrives on the idea of conflict. It flies, it uh, thrives on conflict, on conditioning, okay, on emotional baggage. Just put emotions, okay? It thrives on all of that. And it creates this environment of ignorance. So all of this here, the conflicts, the conditions, the emotions, the beliefs, okay, thoughts, all of it comes to here, to ignorance. So, Brad, what are you saying? What do we have to do to clear out the ego? Well, we have to look into the idea that when we want to go free, we want all of this to go. The result of that is coming into I. Okay? Bhagavad Ramana Maharshi talks about the idea of going into I, about going into the true self, going to God, being God, because that's who you are. This will never escape you. It is impossible for you to escape I. It is impossible for you to escape self. It is impossible for you to escape God, because they're all the same. The source, I, self, God, creator, the one, divine, whatever you want to call it, the mother, the father, okay? It's all the same. It's the exact same thing, all of it, okay? There's no difference between the I, the self, the God, the mother, the father, the source, the divine, the one, whatever you want to call it, okay? That's what it is. That's who you are. None of this, none of this exists outside of you, okay? It is never outside. It is not another. Okay? No other. The self will always be the self. It will always be you. I will always be I. God will always be God. It is who you really are. Okay? For us to get here, this has to go. Okay? Ignorance has to go. It has to be eliminated. It must be dismantled. It must be dissolved. Because this is what's happened. All right, if I draw a picture here of an eye. Okay, here's the eye right there. And basically, this eye has cataract. Okay? It's a cataract within the eye. And I'm also going to do this as well, too. Okay, the eye, the eye, 
This is what ignorance has done. Okay? It's given us a cataract, that foggy, murky uh, obstruction of vision within our eye. The ignorance has done that. The ego has done that. The conditioning has done that. So what you need to do to come into phase two is that you have to have that strong conviction within yourself to go free. Okay? This is your driving force. To go free, to be free, that you are ready, willing, and able to transcend the body, transcend the mind, transcend the thoughts, transcend the emotions, even transcend all of creation, transcend manifestation, all of it together. Okay, because manifestation is the result of the created. It is created reality. Basically, it's all things that are preconceived, all things that are in material, all things that are mattered together, right? That is the creator. That is the created reality. Who you are as the I, as self, as God, you are not here. Okay? You have to see this for yourself. You have to go there for yourself. But you are the creative. You are the unmanifest, right? The creative is where the I, self, God resides. And in the creative, nothing is manifest. It is complete and total stillness. It's not void, okay? We're not looking at void here. We're not looking at an absence of thoughts. We're not looking at void. We're simply looking at the self, We are looking at I. We are looking at God. But again, the I, self, God has no image, has no body, has no form, is not an entity by any means. It simply is. The I, self, God is. So for us to go there, for us to move into phase two and truly be free is to give up as much of these as we can. It's basically just clearing away the cataract within the eye so that you can see God. You can see the self. You can see I. Right? So Ramana Maharshi also presented to us his technique called self-inquiry. Right? Where you are going to I. You are not looking at body consciousness. You are not looking at mind consciousness. You are looking at the true I consciousness, true self-realization. And that true self-realization comes the more that we dissolve the ignorance that is the obstruction in the way of it. So to get into phase two, this is what it entails. This is what I'll be talking more about. There'll be more videos about phase two about coming into realization. Because here's the thing. When we're looking at self-realization, we're not actually realizing the self. The self is all that remains once we clear away the ignorance. What we are being aware of is the ignorance that we have put upon ourselves that has created that cataract obstruction, that murkiness within our eye to free it, to clear all that away. Therefore, what we are doing is when we're saying we're self-realized, I realize the ignorance that was an illusion that was obstructing myself from knowing that I am the self, that I am God, that I am the I, that I am I, I, right? The I am, yes. But it's going into that true I. It's going into that true self, And again, as Ramana Maharshi will say, it's just, it's a really simple thing. You're just asking yourself that one question, who am I? That is the essence pertaining to self-inquiry, okay? It's that one question, who 
M I. And this question is used as a deterrent from all of this. Okay? So if you're going off on a tangent, you got all these thoughts just flowing through you, clustering through you all like crazy, you stop. And you say, whose thoughts do these belong? Oh, to me. Who am I? Right? And that's what we focus on the most. I. Who am I? And then this takes you into that realization, right? You're going beyond the body. You're going beyond the mind. And you come into the creative. You come into the I. You have to know who the base of I is. We say it all the time. I'm going to work. I am going to drive my car. I just got this. I found out that this happened. I, 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 I. We're using it every single day in a sentence. I need to take care of this. I need to handle this person. I, I, I. We're saying it all the time, right? For us not to know what this is, in a way, just becomes a contradiction. It's part of our language. Not saying, oh, we are doing this or thou is doing this, right? I am doing this. I'm taking care of this. I need to get this done, etc. All starts off with that. Even I don't know, right? Starts with the I. Who is I? That's what you have to go into. That's where you need to go inwards and look at I. So what is this all bringing us into? Well, it's going to help us look a lot more deeper beyond the mind. Let's clear off this little area here. So we're going to look more into the mind, okay? Because this is what the mind represents, okay? Here's you. Here's the I, that little dot. Truly, it's invisible. It has no image, but we're using this as an example. That's the mind. Here's all the material contained within the mind. The manifested reality. Okay? Everything is available here and now. There is no yesterday. There is no tomorrow. Everything that is everything exists here in the mind in this very moment simultaneously coexistent, okay? That is the mind, and here is I. So, Brad, what are we trying to do when we do something like self-inquiry, okay? We are pulling all of this back into here. It is being enveloped into the I, okay? Because that's all the mind is. The mind is a construct that we have beamed outwards, right? It is a perception device. And it is that perceptual construct that basically tells us everything that we're experiencing through the mind will go outwards. And this is where we have projected reality. Ramana Maharshi used the example of a movie screen. Okay? Here's the movie screen. Here's the picture that's being projected onto the movie screen, all right? There's a fire in the background. There's another scene of a great flood, a great tidal wave coming upon this person in the movie, right? But when you look at the screen, is that screen being burned by the fire? Is that screen being wet through the tidal wave? No. The projection leaves, and all that remains is the screen. The screen is there. Therefore, through this analogy, the movie screen is permanence, okay? And that is the nature of I. I is permanence. It is forever. It is eternal. It is undying. It is unchanging, okay? It is bliss. It is perfection. That will never change. But you have all these different projections on the screen being shown, right? Same thing with your TV, with your computer monitor, with your phone, etc. It's a screen, okay? You got that glass screen, 
And no matter what you're projecting on it, no matter what the movie is, if it's a bunch of infernos, right? If it's a meteor hitting something, we're not seeing that screen being affected at all. It is the permanent display. It is the container, right? It represents the sustainer of all reality. Well, that's the nature of I, right? It is the sustainer. It encapsulates everything pertaining into reality. You cannot defeat it. You cannot destroy it. You cannot eliminate it. It's That's impossible. It is permanence. The screen will always be there. And that's what we're getting into. We want to be the screen rather than the projection. The projection is the mind. The screen is permanence. The screen is I. The screen is self. The screen is God. Which means everything, everything within the mind can come upon that screen. So what we are doing is as we work with something like self-inquiry, there may be some other methods that you may find as well too, similar to that. Like when I created the clarity technique, all that's doing is working to remove ignorance, right? You're removing ignorance from yourself so that you can therefore be one with I, be one with self, because you already are the self. But you're realizing that ignorance was in the way. It was the cataract in the eye that we're clearing away. And we take everything relating to the mind and we're basically sterilizing it. We're just making everything neutral. We're eliminating the ego altogether. The ego gets eliminated. You know that you are the I. You are living as the I. And you really have no belief systems anymore. You are just content, right? And I know I cannot uh, look into the summary of all of this information in one video. I'm really just giving you guys a crash course. Like I said, there's more videos to come with it, okay? So again, we are taking everything here and we are inverting it. And we're bringing it back into the I, right? Until you are completely still. Until you are completely at one with bliss and you're free. This is how you become free, okay? Freedom can only come through this. It is not coming through phase zero and it is not coming through phase one, okay? The idea of freedom, the idea of being completely free is to be the screen, is to completely alleviate, dismantle, eliminate the ego, the ignorance, okay? Where thoughts are no longer causing disturbance within yourself. You are becoming imperturbable. As you're becoming imperturbable, none of this bothers you, right? You have no conditions. You're open to everything. Thoughts in that sense may pop in your mind, but they don't bother you, right? You're still going to be walking through life. You're still going to have thoughts and you're still going to have feelings, but they cause no harm to you whatsoever. You've completely eliminated the meaning that represents the disturbance that they are. You go into the source. You go into the root of the emotion, of the thought, of the belief, of the conflict, of the conditioning, and you see it for what it is. Once you see it for what it is, it's released, it's taken out, right? It collapses, it's like a domino effect. All of those dominoes just come tumbling down. This again is what you learn in self-inquiry through Ramana Maharshi's technique, okay? I talked about this today through the New Earth TV Live, where again, I was, I've always been aware of Ramana Maharshi, in a certain way, I've had a passing familiarity with him, but I never really looked into him deeply. It wasn't until I was watching some videos with another teacher known as Lester Levinson, right, where he talked about Ramana Maharshi, where he talked about self-inquiry. And this really got me interested, right? So I stumbled upon a video of his, and I was looking at a couple of videos, actually, just in regards to how this self-inquiry practice worked, right? I got a very clear idea of how it worked, just watching a couple of videos from it, Went on my couch, went into meditation, first time, broke all the veils, broke all the ignorance, broke the cataract within the eye, and I was God. I was self. I, right? I am the I am that I am. Okay? That's what happened. All of this was cleared. 
And it was, I would say, the most profound moment of my entire life. And I've had quite a few profound moments, right? What just happened just a few days ago, because that's how fresh this is, was, again, I would say the most profound moment of my entire life. I, I was able to be, I was able to go into that free space, going into freedom, being completely and totally free from the obstructions, from the ignorance that represents all of this. And all I do now is I just go to that space. I go into the eye, right? It's with me right now as I speak. And it's, you can't describe it. You can't describe, say, so, well, Brad, can you describe step by step what, I, what you did? Not really. No, because you're, you're going into the invisible. You're going into the unmanifest. You're going into the unchangeable, right? There's no words to describe it. You just know that you are I. You just know that you are self. You just know that you are God, right? It's the best way it can be described. You can't describe this. It has to be felt through yourself, and it's a clarity. And so you invert all of that from mind. You put it into I, and now I is your entire existence. It's all that is, right? It changes your outlook on how everything is permanently, right? You'll never be the same again. But it's in such a blissful, perfect way that you just, you love it, right? Everything is just bliss. It's, it's perfection. It's, it's, it's magnificence. It's brilliance. It's infinite intelligence, right? It's just here with you. It is I, it's something you've never, ever lost. It's been covered up by fog, but again, you're clearing out the cataract that represents I. Ramana Maharshi also stated that there are two ways into getting into self-realization. Okay? First one is inquiry. Okay? Second way is surrender. Okay? Inquiry. Or surrender. Now, inquiry is the one that I've been practicing. Okay, I've done a little bit of this here and there way before I knew about Maharshi and his technique. Okay, doing some surrendering. But basically, this is the one that I'm doing. And basically, what it is is that as you are now with the I, you are staying there as often as you can, whether it be through meditation or again just through a natural state where you know that you are I and you're holding that. You're holding the I within yourself so that the I, so that God comes within and scrubs away transitionally all of the ignorance that created that cataract within the I. Okay? And this takes time. This is a transitional effect. Ramana Maharshi would say that it's just like the sun setting or it's like the sun rising. It's not going to happen all at once. It happens through the transition, right? We go into dusk. And then dawn comes, and here is the sun rising, right? It is a transitional effect. It's gradual. The same thing goes with realization. Just because you're realizing, like, oh my God, I instantly get everything. <laughs> no, it continues to work with you gradually. Okay? This is phase two, ladies and gentlemen. Like I said, I cannot cover it all in one video. There's going to be some more videos to come. Okay? But really just reflect on what I've shared Look into the who am I. Look into the self-inquiry. Look into the clarity technique, right? The EQ method. Look into the BCR and TC technique. Lester Levinson has his own technique as well, too. The release technique, right? You can look into that. All we're really doing, the, the core of all of this, is to just clear this away. Clear away the ignorance to the best of your ability in the best ways that you feel you can right? So these practices can help you. And you may have some ideas yourself about how you are clearing away the ignorance, getting the, the uh, cataract out of the eye so that you can see clearly and that you know, and you've known all along that you are indeed the eye. Thank you so much for watching. And I'll speak to you again in another perspective of the now. Take care. Thank you very much for checking out the Newer Teachings YouTube channel. Feel free to check out my websites, newearthteachings.com, healingcodecards.com, healingcodeshop.com. Go on to healingcodecards.com to grab your body deck, 
and your Mind Deck, also available in digital versions as well. And of course, you can follow me on social media, on Facebook, on MeWe, and of course on Telegram as well. Thank you again for tuning in, and I'll speak to you again in the next video. Take care, and show the way.